Welcome to our Sound for Video session. It is the 7th of November, 2016. And what I wanted to do today was just talk a little bit about some experiences or some of the practical things relating to a corporate shoot I did just the other day. So um, I hope these things will be helpful for you. What I'm talking about here, kind of some, um, how I recorded it to my mixer and recorder. In this case, I use the Sound Devices 633, but the same would apply if you were using a Zoom F8, F4, Taz Cam recorder, anything uh, pretty much that's actually made for recording multi-track. And um, talk a little bit about how I'd finish it and then also talk about uh, something called Walla, which is a sound effect that is often used in narrative pieces. If you are, if you have a scene that's based in a, say, a restaurant, or in this case, it's supposed to be based in an airport. So let's take a look here. First of all, we have here a, the file that actually I downloaded from one of the clips that we shot. This is supposed to be based, again, in an airport. A woman has missed her flight. Um, an agent with a, ta a tablet walks up to her and helps get her rebooked. So this is what the file looks like straight off of my recorder. Now, I recorded this in a what's called a poly wave file. And in this case, on we have three channels, first channel, second channel, third channel. On the first channel, we have the boom microphone, which is pretty traditional. It, normally, if you're gonna have a boom microphone, plus some wireless microphones, plus some maybe some plant microphones, um, usually you put the boom first, and then you go with the wireless mics after that, and then any plant mics after that, um, generally. <laughs> and then this is called, again, a polywave file. So um, it's actually, isolated tracks. So this is just the boom microphone here. This is just love number one, which is on the agent, the male actor. And this is uh, wireless number two, which is on the actress. So um, normally what I would do is once I bring this into audition, if I were getting ready to finish it, I would come in here and actually extract it to mono files, which I've already done here. Here is the boom mic. Here's uh, the actor's lavalier microphone, and here is the actress's microphone. First thing you'll notice here is we are shooting in an office environment, and there is plenty of noise. There's some um, air conditioning that was actually working during the shoot. We unfortunately did not have the opportunity to remove that, but in this case, it's not a massive issue, and I'll show you why in just a minute here. Um, but let me just show you something interesting here that... Well, let me go back to this here. What I would not do, and what I think a lot of people get confused on, is if you do use a lavalier microphone as sort of a backup in addition to a boom microphone, typically it is just going to be a backup. It's not something normally that you, in the final piece, that you would mix both the boom microphone and the wireless microphones all together. Um, at least in my experience, I would actually choose one or the other. I would choose whichever one sounds better. So let me show you here. Uh, let me play just a few seconds here. This is the boom microphone. Hi, I'm Blake. Looks like your flight was canceled and I wanna to try to see if I can get you to your final destination. What's your last name? Jones. Jones? Bridget Jones? Yes. Bridget. Play a little bit more here. This, this piece right here will be the most important part. That leaves four hours from now at a B20. Is that gonna be okay? Is there anything sooner? I'm really anxious to get home. Really? Okay. That was the boom microphone. Here's lavalier number one. This is the actor's lavalier. I tell you what, we've got you on a flight that leaves four hours from now on a B20. Is that going to be okay? Is there anything sooner? I'm really anxious to get home. Really? Okay, so first of all, yes, you can see there is some bleed. So she is going to be recorded on his microphone as well because they're in close proximity to one another. That's a question I get a lot. Um, and often the, the question takes the form of how do I prevent that from happening? Um, you don't. <laughs> um, I don't know. There, there's no magic way that I know of to do that. Let's play her microphone, same area here. I tell you what, we've got you on a flight that leaves four hours from now on a B20. Is that going to be okay? Is there anything sooner? I'm really anxious to get home. Really? Okay. There are a couple things I noticed there. Number one, of course, yes, there's plenty of bleed. We're picking him up in addition to her. Um, just in terms of hiding, let me explain what I did. So on his mic, he was wearing a kind of a polo shirt. Um, I hid the microphone underneath the button placket on his. That's one of those shirts where the button placket comes down to about here. Um, I taped it on both sides so that it would move with him. 
And that actually worked pretty well. We didn't pick up a whole lot of clothing noise, so I was pretty pleased with that. On her, um, this is, let me take a step back and explain something else first. Um, I knew I was going to boom a mic as well, so I felt pretty confident with that, and I just mainly used, again, the lavaliers as a backup. So on her, these are not professional actors. These are employees of a company. They normally are, um, you know, they, they're office workers, so they don't, they're not professional actors. And one thing that I was not comfortable doing in this particular case was um, hiding the microphone for her underneath her shirt. Um, you have to kind of gauge that on the shoot that you're going to do. Um, and if you have a female assistant and you're going to, you know, or a male assistant, if it's, you know, the reverse roles, um, that may or may not work. And so what I what I typically like to do with women is um, the best place I've found in many cases to hide a lavalier microphone is on the strap on their bra. So underneath their shirt on their bra, the little strap or the, the part where the two cups join together. Um, underneath, behind that. Usually that protects it from rubbing against the shirt or the top or whatever they're wearing. Um, and it works pretty nicely. In this case, um, what I did is I instructed her. And actually, this is not my first shoot with her. I've, done, I've shot with her before. Um, and the last time we did that, and it actually worked out quite nicely. In this case, it didn't work out quite so nicely. I don't know if it was the clothing she was wearing. It's like a kind of a sweater thing that she was wearing. Um, so I think we picked up a lot more clothing noise as a result of that. So that would be one reason why I would probably not use the lavalier for her particular parts, in addition to some other things. The lavaliers are also more challenging in post, potentially because um, there is that bleed. So what I would want to do is um, replace the bleed of him in her mic um, and do a lot of cleanup. There's quite a bit you'd have to do. So maybe you're starting to see, and for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while or have taken one of my courses, um, I use lavalier microphones as tools. I don't use them as my first choice. They're usually, um, I use them when I have to, and I use them I use them a lot, um, but rarely when I'm booming a mic and using a lav do I choose the lav mic, and here's a great example of why that is. So I just wanted you to see that um, as well. So again, let me just play this part right here again in the boom mic and then in her mic. This is the boom mic. Is that going to be okay? Is there anything sooner? I'm really anxious to get home. Really? Her mic. Is that going to be okay? Is there anything sooner? I'm really anxious to get home. Really? Just the sound quality is not quite the same either. And this is a decent mic. This was, um, actually, let me, sh let me actually play his in the same spot. That leaves four hours from now on a B20. Is that going to be okay? Is there anything sooner? Okay, and then... That leaves four hours from now at a B20. Is that going to be okay? You, you can hear a little bit of a difference there as well. The um, In his case, we're actually using a, a high-quality lavalier mic. That is the Sanken Cost 11D, which is one of the better lavalier mics that I've used. It tends to sound a little bit more natural than most lavs. And the problem with most lavs is if you hide them on the chest, they tend to they tend not to sound all that great. Um, her lav was actually a Rode lavalier. I don't really love that mic. It's <laughs> it is one I have in my kit, so I do use it. But at some point in the future, when I have the budget, I'll probably replace that. Um, and I think you could hear how it sounded very nasally to me. The Cost 11D, the Sanken Cost 11D, sounded pretty decent, but nothing to me, to my ear, sounded as nice as that boom microphone. In, partic in particular, in this case, the boom microphone I used was a um, Audio Technica 4053B hypercardioid. So. That one worked out pretty well. So, so that was just I just want to use that as sort of a practical example of um, a. There is it is important I think to boom and to love if you're going to be doing this professionally. You have clients paying. You only get so much time with the talent. Um, you need to have some backup there. In this case, the lavalier served as a fine backup, but in this case, because we were we did boom effectively, um, I think the boom mic is going to work better for us. So, there is a little lesson there now. Remember I, I mentioned to you, look, at there's a lot of noise, this is actually noise that's partly clothing noise, it's partly air conditioner, um, and some other things going on. But in this case, because this is a scene that takes place within an airport, and technically this is an office space that we're working in here, just kind of a large um, common room that we kind of did our best to make it look like an airport for this narrative piece. Um, one thing I wanted to do to kind of sell the effect in the piece was I wanted to have airport chatter. 
um, people talking in the background because that's what you typically hear at an airport when you're out in the the gate area. So um, what we did is we recorded what is called Walla. And let me just play a little bit for you. This is a sound effect that is often used again in restaurants and kind of public places where you want to simulate a lot of people having conversations. So let me just talk about the technique we used for recording that. This will actually sit behind the dialogue. And um, of course, the idea is to, to simulate and, and sell the effect that these people are in an airport and they're, they're having a conversation. So we wanted all this in the background because for most viewers, they're going to expect that. When you're at an airport, you're going to have a little bit of that. Now, of course, I'll, it'll be very careful in the mix to figure out how loud I want this to be relative to the main dialogue parts. Um, but I'll show you some things on that as well. But the technique for recording this is that I actually used a light stand. I set it in the center of the room. I used the uh, clip on a lavalier microphone and clipped that to the top of the light stand at about, you know, kind of an average height for most people. And then I had a bunch of extras on the set there, um, approximately, I would say, 10 people. And what we did is we had these 10 people walk in a circle around the light stand with the microphone on it. Um, probably about f had them walk about four to five feet away from the microphone and had them walk in a circle around it. And while they were walking in a circle around it, and I recorded uh, right around a minute, um, I had each of them have a conversation with themselves. Just talk about random things. Talk about what you had for breakfast. Talk about whatever comes to your mind. Don't, don't get too loud or too soft, or you can get soft, but don't get too loud. Use a normal talking voice. And we just had them walking in a circle and recorded that for about a minute. And now I can use that as the backdrop for this uh, this particular scene where they're in the airport. Now, one thing that I'll do is there's always going to be a fight when you're when you're mixing. <laughs> You'll run into this as you start to do more of this if you haven't already. Um, for those of you who have done it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's always this kind of back and forth about how loud the background stuff should be versus how loud the dialogue should be. And it can be tricky to get them, it seems like sometimes to really make sure that the dialogue, the main thing you want people to hear, to make sure that that is plenty loud and, and discernible and, you know, present, you often have to drop the background, for example, this Walla effect, quite a lot to the point where you almost can't hear it. And that can be kind of frustrating because you're like, well, no, I, I want it to be heard, but not prominent. And so... Um, we actually talked about this in relation to music in the past, but you do a very similar thing here. I would actually EQ this Walla. So I'll come up here to Effects. Um, we'll come down to Filter and EQ. We'll use a parametric equalizer. And really what I would do is I would probably grab, let's see, number three here. Is this number three? No, that's number two. I would take number two to somewhere around 1,500 hertz. And I would pull it down by about maybe 6 dB. And you can play with its width. I would I would definitely widen it up quite a lot. Do a quite a wide cut like that. And what that does is that makes space in the mix for the dialogue because the dialogue is going to sit mainly in this area here. And what you're doing is you're taking the Wally. It's still be very present. Um, and I'll play it for you in just a second here with and without the EQ. But it will still be very present. But it will make more room for the dialogue. So they won't compete so much. So you can have the Walla there, and it'll it'll be very um, you'll be able to hear it. But you'll also have the dialogue and it won't be competing as much with the dialogue. So it's a pretty nice technique to kind of be able to mix those two together without having to pull down the Walla effect too much. So let me play this here for you um, with and without. First of all, here's the effect with no EQ. <laughs> Okay, and here's with. Can you tell the difference? It's pretty subtle. <laughs> However, once you start to mix the two of them together, this will make a huge, huge difference. So I would go ahead and apply that. You'll see it definitely changed the waveform. It did make it quieter in and of itself, um, but now you can mix it. And if you did need to pull the amplitude back up, you could certainly do that as well. So... There are some thoughts on kind of some of the things that I usually find myself working with on corporate shoots. 
Um, this one was a little bit more of a narrative piece. It was more of a, demo, a product demonstration, and they wanted to do it in the form of a narrative. Um, but there were definitely some things learned here. I hope those were helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And we will talk to you again next week. Take care.